Okay, today we're going to look at the uh, sequencer in uh, Blender. It is a uh, basically a video timeline that you can edit videos with. Uh, it's not really designed to do like full movies. It's kind of designed to do short clips, and it has some neat features. Uh, and uh, it's it's not that hard to use if you're familiar with how Blender works because it works similar to everything else in Blender. So let's get started. If we come up here. Uh, we can browse our next window choice and we'll go down to 4 which is sequencer and this is kind of a default view for the sequencer obviously you can customize your own if you'd like At this point I'm going to import a video and uh, so I'm going to hit space over the uh, sequencer view here in the center you can also go to add if you want to do it that way but I'll like hit space and I'm going to do a movie with audio from the hard drive so I'm going to go in there, I'm going to select this video, and I'm going to drag it over here, and I'm going to just put it at the beginning of my timeline. Now there's a few things uh, you need to notice here. One, that the green uh, line right here is the audio, and the blue is the video. And that's kind of weird, because usually video editors put the video on top and the audio under. And so it can get confusing if you forget that the default is that way, you'll end up trying to do something with the video and it'll tell you you can't because you're clicking up here on the audio. So the blue down here is the video, this is the audio. You'll also notice right here it tells you the length and the length is different and if I scroll back with my mouse you'll see that the audio is a lot shorter than the video. When I first started working with the sequencer uh, this was driving me crazy I could not figure out why and the reason is because by default Blender is using a uh, PAL instead of NTSC, which uses uh, 25 frames per second. And so it imported this video, which is actually closer to 30 frames per second, 29.997, and is actually playing it back at 25. So it, I kind of stretched out the video a little bit, and that's why it's not matching the audio. What you need to do if you're working in NTSC is click the NTSC button. It changes the aspect and ratio of the video, and it changes the frames per second you see right here to 30. Now you notice our video is still not lined up with the audio because you have to do that before you import the video. So I'm going to select those and hit delete and I will import it again and I'll drag. As you're dragging you'll see by my cursor here it has a little number that keeps changing. That is the frame that uh, the video is beginning on and also shows uh, at the end of the timeline uh, clip what number the video is ending on. So I'm going to scroll it all the way down to 1. Well, I'm at 2 here. It would be easier if I was zoomed in better. Uh, things work the same here. Right now I have both clips selected. You right click to select, shift select to select both. You can also hit A to unselect and select all. You can also hit B to box select. You use G to grab and move the video around. You'll see the screen line here, that's where we are on the timeline, and you get a preview up in the little video window up here. You also need to keep in mind how many frames uh, your video is, because when you go to render, by default you have ending at 250 frames, and if you go to render this, it will stop at 250 frames. So, we'll look at this. Uh, we only have one clip, so we know our last frame is uh, 3,730, because it tells us that right there. If you're unsure, you just click at the end of your timeline, and right here it shows you you're at frame 3733 is where I'm clicked there. So you can click here and change your timeline to the length that you need it to be for rendering. And you also notice you have these little arrows at the end, beginning and end of each video clip. You can right click those and shift select to do both and then you can do G to grab and you can resize the video so we can trim it down. It leaves you a little line there showing where, uh, how long the actual clip is. At this point I'm going to import another video. Uh, which one do I have imported there? B4. Okay, so I'm going to import this video clip now. And I'll put it right there. And now I can shift select the end clips here and I can grab and drag. You can also do it on the other end as so. Now I'm going to show you a quick way to do transitions. Now you notice we have two videos. I have them overlapping here. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this first one and then shift click the second one and make sure you're doing it on the lower blue ones which is the video. At this point I can hit space bar and I'm going to go down to, you can either do cross or gamma cross, I prefer gamma cross. And now we have, if you watch our little preview up here, that is our little transition fading from one to another. Now it is important, I'm going to click that and delete it, that you select first to second when you're selecting because the sequencer doesn't care what video is on top or bottom when it comes to transition is it matters which one you select first so if I was to select the second video and then the first add gamma cross you'll see that here it says four to two or before it said two to four that's the track you're on you can see that over here to the side two and four so it's going to be fading from two four to two here which is not what we want because you'll see here we got one video and it will cut to the other video, fade back to the first, and then cut to the second video. That's not what we want. Delete that. So select the first video, then the second video, and then gamma cross. So that is our first tutorial on the sequencer. I want to keep it short. Don't want to go over my 10 minute time limit, but I'll have more to follow shortly. Films by Chris. The link is in the description for more videos and tutorials like this.